Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Plano. If you're visiting with us online, we want to say good morning to you as, and welcome as well. If you would let us know that you are visiting online, we'd appreciate that. Uh, email us at office at firstplano.org. Let us know who you are, where you are, and any prayer requests or ways that we can be of ministry to you. If you're here in person, which I can see you, but I can't write your name in the book. So find the book at the end of the pew and register your attendance. We would greatly appreciate that. We have a, a, a special visitor this morning, uh, our music director, Kurt Thomas. <laughs> Welcome back, Kurt. I have to say, someone, uh, we missed you sorely. Uh, and because there was not, well, someone said that they thought they heard me singing the other day. <laughs> and I apologized uh, for that. But it made me appreciate you all the much more. So welcome back, Kurt. It's good to have you. I want to thank everyone who, who came yesterday and, and gave the, the church, a, a, especially a front porch makeover. Uh, looks incredible out there. So thanks for those of you that, that did the church work day yesterday. So much done. How many of you noticed the, the front flower beds this morning? Oh, fit safe. Nobody raised their hands. We're fixing to take a field trip and walk out there and see. All right. Good, good, good. Well, thank you all. I want to remind you, too, there's a table in the narthex uh, because uh, Neil McCown, as you know, is working on a marketing campaign for our ministry. Uh, now, I know that sounds kind of weird. We're doing a marketing, marketing campaign for our ministry, but it's not weird at all. We just want to find new ways to communicate to the community and those around of what we do, who we are, and that sort of thing. So your input is needed. Neil's going to be here later this week, Wednesday through Friday, I think. You will find on that table... It's got a purple tablecloth on it. You can't miss it. Uh, opportunities to sign up to be interviewed by Neil or just do a, a question and answer. Um, and so please do that. Uh, this will help us tremendously. He's got some questions that you're going to have fun answering uh, as you talk about our church and your commitment to it. So please, please do that. There's some, the, the schedule you'll see, I think, in the bulletin, Wednesday uh, from 10 to noon and then 6 p.m., uh, you know, there's a great deal of activity going on, and so sign up in times that you can, can find to come and be a part of that, especially those of you, well, really all of you need to be interviewed, so be sure and do that. I want to also say that uh, uh, the flowers this morning, and, and Ms. Schultz, obviously, incredible job, those are given this morning in honor uh, and in celebration of a wonderful life lived, and that of our brother Harold Meyer, uh, who passed this past week, so... Uh, thank you, Judy, and thank you, Harold Meyer, and the family of Harold Meyer, uh, for that reminder of just what an incredible member he was and man he was here. As we prepare to light the Christ candle, Madison, would you like to come up and help me? Okay, well, maybe, maybe later. But the reminder that we are the clothing church. We really are, and God has given us that, that mission and that ministry to clothe body and soul in our community. And we light the Christ candle in honor and celebration of that ministry. Okay, really quickly before Marcy starts the beautiful musical contemplation, she has a quick request. Um, this music that she's playing has wonderful words and a wonderful uh, message attached to it. So she's encouraging everyone, open up your hymnal to page number 247 and read along to the wonderful words that go with this um, beautiful contemplation that Marcy's going to be playing here. 247. 247. <laughs>
Please stand for the call to worship. Into our fears and through our locked doors. Come, almighty God. When we think peace be with you means no change or disruption. Come, Lord Jesus. Amidst our lives that confuse religious entertainment with Easter fulfillment. Come, Holy Spirit. For the sake of a community meant to be its best during crisis. Come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Breathe in this place, O Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Open our minds, unlock our hearts, and enliven our faith so that we may welcome the risen Christ among us. Amen. You may be seated. All right, Dylan. Come on up, bud. Madison, you want to come? I mean... We might as well have the whole gang. All right. What happened to your shoes? Oh, never mind. Never mind. It's okay. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Madison? Okay. We'll talk later. All right, Dylan. What are these? Glasses. Glasses. They really are glasses, aren't they? You know what, what these do? They make you see everything. You're exactly right, Dylan. That is incredible. Thank you, Dylan. They make you see everything. And I'm going to point out something this morning. Those flowers I talked about a while ago are given in memory and in honor of a man who wore glasses. And he had the incredible ability, I think, to see people like Jesus saw them. And that's really, we don't really need glasses to do that. But I want you to think about that this week. Looking at people, everybody that you see, all the people here and all the people that you see at school, think about what, how Jesus sees them. You won't need glasses for that, but I want you to think about Harold whenever you see those people and think, what would Jesus see when he looks at them? Okay? Sound good? Dylan? Sound good? Yeah. All right, good. Give me five here. You can go. Thanks, sir. If you would please stand and body your spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, number 306, see, Bless Be the Tie That Binds. <laughs> be seated.
the call to confession. When we stand at the baptismal font and confess our sins, we are not doing so as lost. Guilty and ambiguous human beings who are not sure of our standing before God. We do not come groveling, but we come confident as those who are no longer dead in our trespasses, but who are already alive in Jesus Christ. Without God's grace, we would not even know we are sinners. So we confess together. O oh Lord, our God, we think our best should happen when we are in control. Forgive us for ex expecting the risen Christ to show up when we are anxious, content to lock the doors of your house for fear of all that is outside. Forgive us for thinking that church mainly happens inside these walls and not into the world you so love and into which we are sent. Forgive us for looking for your power in all the conventional places, but never in places of brokenness, crisis, and defeat. In your mercy, forgive that we have been, repair what we are, and by the power of Christ's resurrection, raise us up to serve others for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who offered his life in love to save the world from sin. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. Now please stand. Everybody has their favorite part of the service. Well, hopefully you have a favorite part of the service. <laughs> this is probably one of mine. The peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. And now share that peace with one another this morning. A sign or a wave or a kiss or a hug or a handshake. <laughs> Our prayer of illumination. Divine Redeemer, bearer of life, upon us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us from and turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 133. May we take comfort in God, our helper, as we hear scripture read. Starting with verse 1. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, 
running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them For as many who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our gospel reading on the second Sunday of Easter comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails on, and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want you to, uh, to, to think back with me now to some days gone by. Well, and some days not that long ago. Which TV family was your favorite? Think about it. Was it maybe the the Father's Knows Best crew? That's a few years ago. How about the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet? Now don't tell me that some of you girls didn't have a crush on Ricky Nelson. He had great hair. He really did. Maybe Lucy and Desi and their family? Personally, I, I preferred Fred and Ethel on that particular show. The Honeymooners crew crew should probably be considered in that group. Then there was the Donna Reed show, Dick Van Dyke, and I'll admit to having a crush on Patty Duke uh, when I was younger. She was a bit older than me, but still, I thought there was a chance for a while. Leave it to Beaver gave us a pretty good model for housewives, wouldn't you say? I mean, June always fixed the meals with high heels and pearls on. And plus, that character of Eddie Haskell has become a bit of a legend uh, and cliche. Then there was the All in the Family with Archie and and Edith Bunker, and of course the Jeffersons followed them. The 70s gave us the Partridge Family, Happy Days, and that incredibly creatively named show called Family. There was Eight is Enough, which I disagreed. I thought Seven was enough. Different Strokes, The Brady Bunch, Sanford the Sun, Three's Company was kind of a family show. Good times, what's happening, one day at a time. And then there was soap. Then uh, long after that, the, the Cosby Show, 
family ties, mama's family, family matters, you know, family's in there. Growing pains, full house, and don't forget Alf. That was a good one. The 90s brought us home improvement and married with children, which was a bit controversial at the time. And uh, then the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Roseanne. And don't forget that everybody loves Raymond, and probably my favorite of all of them was the Wonder Years. Since the turn of the century, family shows have really kind of gotten interesting and different. Uh, wouldn't you think? There's lots of cartoons. The Simpsons, Bob's Burger, King of the Hill, Family Guy, and there's others. And then there was Malcolm in the Middle, 2.5 Men, The King of Queens. My daughter Gabrielle and I loved the show The Middle. Uh, we liked that one a lot. And maybe the one that reflects modern culture the best is appropriately called Modern Family. I, I could go on, but you're probably wondering why I've gone this far to begin with, right? Um, well, there is a reason. I want you to, to think about those and, and, and your favorites, but think about all those that I mentioned that you remember. Of all those fictitious families, what do those have in common with actual real families like yours and mine? And there may be a few things, but there's one thread that is pretty consistent, I think. I, trust me, I did not go back and watch all of those, but I remember enough to make a couple of judgments. While you're thinking about that, now think about what, what would be the, the common thread through all of those. While you're thinking about that, I want to tell you about a, a man who is looking to buy a new car. He goes to the dealership, he finds a model that might work for his family. And the salesman says, this car will fit a family of five with no problems. And the man thinks about it for a minute and says, I don't know a family of five with no problems, much less mine. A wise man was once asked to define family, and he said, well, first I'll spell it for you. It's P-R-O-B-L-E-M-S. Now, please understand, I know very well that none of us here this morning or joining us online uh, have any problems in our families. Those just don't come up. But maybe some of those people that you know, you know, you have a friend, you know, that has maybe some family problems here and there that maybe struggle from time to time. Some of you got the sarcasm in that. Some of you are still working on it, and I understand that. Let's be honest. Family life is not easy. No matter how easy the Cosbys or Father Knows Best folk made it look, it's not easy. And when you really think about it, most every episode in all of those thousands of shows we're dealing with some kind of problem. And truthfully, families have had problems since the beginning. I'm thinking there wasn't much conversation between Adam and Eve for a while following that whole forbidden fruit incident. Jesus' own family thought he had gone crazy and were going to take hold of him because they thought maybe he had kind of stepped off the, the deep end. Cain and Abel were certainly not the model for the Scripture that we read from Psalm 133, which you'll remember how, good, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred or brothers live together in unity. Scholars disagree on whether this term kindred or brothers in the verse actually meant blood families or tribes or even nations or just people who traveled together or were together. After all, this was what was called an, an ascent psalm. It's one of those, if you want to say, yes, I've been memorizing the Psalms, this is the one you want to start with. It's three verses. Okay, look it up. But it was an ascent psalm, and it was to be sung or chanted at the end of a journey. When the Hebrews would travel to Jerusalem on those three, especially those three times a year for the festivals, for those main feasts, they'd crest the hill overlooking the city, and they would sing or shout or chant this and other psalms. And when you think about it, it really does make sense. Think about the, the road trips with your family, especially maybe when children were a little bit younger. I, I, one of my million dollar ideas that I never did get paid for or even develop too much was creating a bingo card for parents with children on road trips because you hear things a lot the same. Don't touch me. He's looking at me. It's good over. I need to go to the bathroom. How much further? Make her stop. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Are we? Wouldn't that have made a great bingo card? You travel along. Now, maybe the Hebrews weren't traveling in station wagons or minivans, but you can bet the same things were going on. And 
much like our own road trips, all was forgiven and everybody was happy and celebrating when we finally reached the destination. Maybe your family sang songs of praise, <laughs> maybe not, but there was relief that the trip, you know, we'd made the, made the destination. There was relief and celebration going on in everybody's heart. And so the psalmist says how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. How wonderful it is when kindred live together in unity. When everyone is sharing what they have as anyone had need, much like the, uh, we read about, that Nancy read from the passage in Acts, there was not a needy person among them. Family, whichever kind it is, whether it's biological, church family, work family, school family, really any kind of family, experiences those wonderful times occasionally when everything is good and pleasant, right? But let's be honest, it's not that way all the time. Remember what I said about the guy buying the car? He didn't know a family that didn't have problems, right? And so what's the psalmist's point here? Was it, did he say that to make us feel guilty? That there was something wrong with us if we didn't live in some sort of utopian family happiness all the time? That's, that's a bit unrealistic, at least in my experience. That's not to say that we don't experience the good and pleasant part a, a lot of the time. But it's not always that way. I think if we look a little deeper at all that the psalmist said, we, we might get a clue of an, an additional truth or, or maybe two. Now, we all know that pouring fine olive oil on someone's head uh, was a way to honor the person. And, and it was to be desired. Uh, and it was, it was an incredible honor. Uh, but the psalmist doesn't stop with just Aaron's head being anointed with oil. He pushes it to the point where it runs down his beard or into his beard and onto the collar of his robe. Probably a pretty big mess. It's a lot like family sometimes. It can get pretty messy, right? Family members don't always see eye to eye or realize that what mom and dad uh, tell them is the only true and right way. Sometimes friends and family, as they say, have a falling out. Songwriters Burton Cummings and Randy Bachman of the rock group Guess Who penned these lyrics. The lone wolves howl on Moonlight Bay. Dark moon is out when friends fall out. There's nothing good or pleasant when friends or family fall out, when family gets messy. But the psalmist doesn't leave us there either. He goes on. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Mount Hermon is about 175 miles as the crow flies from Jerusalem, from Zion. It seems pretty unlikely, doesn't it, that, that dew from that mountain would fall on the desert city of Jerusalem. Don't you think? I'm told that heavy dew does fall in Jerusalem, but there's no way to anticipate this, this life-giving drink of water. It's completely random. No one can predict it, it would seem, but it's always welcome. Maybe good and pleasant or maybe the good and pleasant ideal that the psalmist mentions is unpredictable too. Maybe, uh, in fact, I'm sure of it. It's unpredictable. You never know when those incredible, beautiful, and wonderful moments will come in your biological family or, or work family or church family or in the family of man. But even though those moments are unpredictable, praise God, they do happen. How good and pleasant it is when family lives in unity, but that doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it's a pretty rare occurrence, which may make it all the more valuable. You know how that works. In the market, anything that's, that there's an overabundance of is sold cheap. If inventory, though, is severely limited, the price goes up. Have any of you ever been to Franklin's Barbecue in Austin, Texas? Okay, we have two believers. 
Uh, if you look on their website, you'll notice that they're closed on Mondays, but they're really not open much of the time after that either. They open at 11 on Tuesday through Sunday, but that usually only lasts about three hours. They close by two, three at the latest. But that's when they run out of brisket. Now, if you want to be certain to eat lunch there, you have to get in line about 9 a.m. No joke. Brisket sandwich cost, I think, $17 when I was there last. That's for a sandwich. And, and i got to tell you, it's worth it. I, people line up every day, day after day, starting at about 9 a.m., sometimes even earlier than that, to just to get there before they run out. Now, why would they do that? Why wouldn't he just make more and serve longer? Well, according to people with this, you know, barbecue expert, so to speak, and I guess the rest of the world, uh, it's the best that you can get. Aaron Franklin is convinced that his system can't be improved, and perfection is rare indeed. And so rather than try to make more and change something, he's committed to sticking. But if you're willing to wait, some would say that it'll, it'll take you to barbecue heaven. It's rare and valuable, much like those times in our families when things are good and pleasant. In a roundabout way, that's kind of what the psalmist is telling you and I, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred, when families of all kinds live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, onto the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life evermore. Life, family life, is wonderful, incredible, and beautiful. And it's also messy and disorganized and sometimes incredibly frustrating. But the blessings do come. The dew does fall on the desert, even though it's unpredictable. It happens. And what makes it so great is that those blessings are rare sometimes. They're valuable. They're treasures. And at the end of the journey, the culmination of all that wonderful messy, unpredictable, and rare experience we call life, family life, comes the ultimate blessing, life evermore, ordained by God for you and for me. Thanks be to God. Amen. We become who we are called to be, not through getting, acquiring, and possessing, but in our giving. To that end, let us worship God by giving our good gifts. You are invited to leave your gift in the offering plate in the narthex as you exit the sanctuary after worship. Give electronically via our online portal or to mail your offering into the church. For those of you at home, the mailing address is displayed at the end of the video. Please rise as you are able for our doxology. pray. Good and gracious God, help us to say thank you, to live with gratitude, to look for the best in each other, and to live charitably with all. May your resurrection never stop surprising us, disrupting us, and transforming us until Christ's kingdom comes. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You will please remain standing and join in singing our communion hymn number 288, Spirit of the Living God. As we prepare for communion, I want to remind everyone that if you're visiting with us, this table is the Lord's table. It's not ours. And so you're welcome to join us uh, in communion this morning. In John 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Come not because of any goodness uh, of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord maybe a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper in, from Acts. For I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. After supper saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. God, we praise and thank you for your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and ministry, announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power in the lifting of the downtrodden, the healing of the sick, and the loving of the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross for the redemption of the world 
and for your raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory that we shall share. We give you thanks for this bread and wine, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. This we pray in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, broken for you. This cup is the new covenant, <clears throat> sealed with my blood. I would invite you to come down the center aisle. Nancy will be here. I'll be here with the bread and the wine. I want to remind you that the wine is on the, in the center part of the, uh, of the communion trays and grape juice around the outside. Come to the table this morning. Nancy. <laughs>
Your death, O Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection we confess. Your final coming we await. Glory be to you, O Christ. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Please join me in our prayer after communion. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to our prayer time. I want to remind you again to take the inside insert that has the list of, of prayer requests. And if you can, join us on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. on Zoom. The information's in the bulletin, I think. And, and you can look on the website and find the, the Zoom link and so forth. But join us there if you can. And, uh, but if you can't, still, what did I, what I tell you? Take this with you. Take this with you, divide it up into five or six or seven or ten sections and pray for the folks on the list, many of our church members, but also folks that are friends and family of folks that we know. Uh, this is incredible ministry that our church offers, and, uh, and it's, we have seen incredible things happen uh, by the movement of God from a number of the folks that are on uh, this list. That the good news is when they're off the list, uh, and it's really pretty exciting. So, if you would. Join me in prayer. Living God, giver of life, hear us as we pray, saying, Pour out your blessings, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the earth. Help us to see the scars of death that mark your good creation and to seek the blessing of life that you offer to all creatures. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of life. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community. Give us a vision of the common good, not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and our joy may be complete. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. By the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray so that the world may come to know the gift of life in Christ our Lord. Amen. You please stand and body your spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, number 317. In Christ there is no east or west.
as I uh, worked on that message this week, I thought, is it, is it a bad thing to point out that families are messy? I decided it wasn't, obviously. Uh, but I think there's a, a beauty in that mess oftentimes that we, we miss. And so this week, as you go, think about how very good and pleasant it is, even when it's not all that good and pleasant sometimes. And understand that that good and pleasantness that comes is a true gift from God. And it is sometimes rare, but it is a treasure. And as you go today, go knowing that you walk with Christ Jesus every step of the way.